Carl Allen Fontenot was born on August 10th, 1964 in Ada, Oklahoma. For more than 35 of his 56 years on earth, he's been better known as Oklahoma Department of Corrections inmate number 148909. The state of Oklahoma convicted Fontenot in 1985 of raping and killing a young woman named Donna Haraway. Police interrogated Fontenot upon his arrest in 1984 for nearly two hours. Then they switched on a video recorder. The investigators urged Fontenot on as he confessed to abducting Haraway with two other men. In this videotaped portion of Fontenot's interrogation, he confessed that the three men first took Haraway to an abandoned house. There they raped and murdered her before burning her body. I'll tell you more about Fontenot in a moment, but let me step back. When each of us is presented with any type of media or communication, our minds take cognitive shortcuts or leaps in judgment making so we can decide how to react. These are sometimes called biases. As communicators relying on storytelling to share ideas, we frame people like Carl Fontenot not as proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. We frame him as a character in a story. And each character in a story has a role to play. The hero, the victim, the perpetrator. Carl has been each of these characters for us now. First, he was the villain defendant in the 1980s in local TV and newspaper media. Over time, his case was extensively documented across three books, a Netflix series, and true crime podcast episodes. What he hasn't been is treated fairly by our democratic institutions. In order for there to be a crusader of justice in popular entertainment, there must be a corresponding villain in order for us to perceive law enforcement as inherently good. News reporters are responsible for considering the perspective of everyone across the spectrum of a given story, yet we rely on storytelling shortcuts every day, suspense, conflict, drama, to convey important information to our audiences. We do this all while trying our best not to frame people like Carl Fontenot as the good guy or the bad guy. And much of the time, journalists fail miserably at this task. You may have heard the expression, perception is everything. It is. We must seek to become more intelligent consumers of media and messages by understanding how framing and media biases cloud our perceptions. When Fontenot was sentenced to death in 1985, Oklahoma authorities had not found the body of Donna Haraway. There was no physical evidence at all, in fact, linking Fontenot to her killing. No one could say for certain when he was convicted that Haraway had been murdered in the first place. Juries in Oklahoma nonetheless determined on two occasions that Fontenot was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of taking Haraway's life. I wanted to know more, so I studied Fontenot's case a lot. He hardly had a chance to develop emotionally between a horrific upbringing in Ada and decades in prison. He roamed the streets of Ada with no real home or family until his arrest in 1984, and for years, he received virtually no visitors other than legal representatives. Much of the remainder of his life has been spent in the most unforgiving of Oklahoma's correctional institutions. Carl Fontenot's story has been told many times now in popular culture, but it remains a story that's full meaning has escaped us all along. There's nothing sinister about our love of true crime entertainment. In fact, we're hardwired to love it. But it's critical to know how we perceive characters in a story when their lives are at stake. We can do this and still love true crime, drink wine, and be in bed by nine. Part of what attracted me so much to the story of Carl Fontenot is that from a distance, he didn't seem to cleanly fit the cultural framework we've assembled for ourselves of wrongfully convicted people. Despite the books and Netflix series and podcast episodes, it remained difficult to tell if he was a victim or a villain. Fontenot didn't easily meet our needs as storytellers, but he did tell an important story about fairness. 
In order for criminal justice to work in the United States and here in Oklahoma, whether Carl Fontenot neatly fits as a character in his own drama, does it matter if so many people now question his conviction? And that list of critics includes a federal judge in his case. Fontenot was sentenced to death twice before being resentenced to life in prison. The Oklahoma Innocence Project took up Fontenot's case when the law clinic was first formed at Oklahoma City University in 2011. And by 2019, Oklahoma police and prosecutors had admitted that they never found any evidence to corroborate what Fontenot described in his confession. In fact, newly discovered evidence that was previously withheld from Fontenot by Oklahoma law enforcement contradicts his own confession. According to the federal judge, this new evidence provides, quote, solid proof of Mr. Fontenot's probable innocence. In the judge's nearly 200-page ruling, one statement reaches to the heart of Carl's case, quote, no rational juror who was able to set aside the tragedy of Ms. Haraway's death could find beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Fontenot should be convicted by his own words. That extraordinary statement only occurred after Fontenot had exhausted his appeals in Oklahoma. I'm not trying to dissuade you today from consuming true crime entertainment. We rely upon storytelling and loosely shared understandings to simplify and act upon media messages and events in our lives. But the courts we also share are not responsible for assigning TV roles to each of us. They're responsible for ensuring that each of us is granted fairness, due process, and equal protection under the law. Fontenot was released from prison in December of 2019 after being declared innocent of the crimes for which he was accused almost 40 years ago now. But his time on the outside could be short-lived. Even now, he has never been exonerated by the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma Attorney General Mike Hunter has appealed the federal judge's ruling and maintains that Fontenot was guilty and not entitled to a new trial. He must return to an Oklahoma courtroom and could wind up in prison all over again, perhaps for the rest of his life. So while the Netflix series and the books and the podcast episodes are over now for us, Carl Fontenot's horror story never ends for him. Thank you. <laughs>